So thanks to the Norwegian Tax Administration for uh, sponsoring the purchase of this uh, M3 Ultra Max Studio. Here we have 20 performance cores, 8 efficiency cores, 96 gigabytes of memory and 1 terabyte of internal storage packed into this small aluminum uh, brick. You see, my tax return came back uh, positive, so I decided to use it to change up my workflow somewhat. And I know for what I do, this is probably a little bit overkill, but it's fun and uh, let's make some videos about it. The Mac Studio M3 Ultra is going to be my main computer for everything I do. Music production using Ableton and occasionally Logic and uh, video editing 4K uh, higher bitrate videos for this YouTube channel. And I mean, of course, everything else office related when I'm not on the go. And when I am on the go, I'm actually going to use a uh, M4 MacBook Air, so stay tuned for that as well. I'm going to release more dedicated videos showing more in-depth testing with uh, different music production DAWs, but let's just take a quick look at some of the performance right now, and make sure you stay subscribed to this channel if you want, so you don't miss when I post uh, new videos about uh, this topic. And later in this video, I will explain my reasoning for going for the M3 Ultra instead of the M4 Max, so stick around for that. But if you don't want to stick around for that, it's basically the amount of cores. So with my DAW overload template I have shown on this channel before in other Mac testing videos, in this quick test I was actually able to play back 338 tracks on the M3 Ultra without getting a system overload. So these are basically two synthesizers. It's a Diva and the Serum. It's just a uh, basic patch, nothing special. I just duplicated uh, all the time. And that's what I started doing a few years ago. So I can't really change up the way I do it or change up the notes because then I can't compare it with the other Max uh, I have already done. So I just have to keep doing it uh, all the time. On the M4 Pro, 16 inch MacBook Pro, I got up to 205 tracks with the same overload template and the same logic settings. So in this specific example, the M3 Ultra base model was able to handle 133 more tracks compared to the 16 inch M4 Pro MacBook Pro uh, 48 gig variant. I also did a quick test in Ableton and uh, it looked like the Ableton was able to handle a hundred more tracks compared to the M4 Pro, but I'm going more into this in another video where I will focus more on the M4 MacBook Air actually and compare it uh, to uh, uh, these computers. I think actually a lot of people, uh, me included, got surprised when Apple released uh, a new version of the M3 Ultra. When it first came out, uh, it didn't look like it had this sort of interconnect and uh, people, we didn't think that Apple was going to release the M3 Ultra. We thought it was, they were going to skip it for the M4 Ultra instead or something else. But uh, apparently this is not the case. I don't really know why, because I don't see why the M4 Max could be combined into two M4 Maxes and shoved into the Mac Studio. I mean, if you can have the M4 Max in a 16 inch MacBook Pro, I don't think uh, it's a cooling issue. I don't know, it's maybe Apple wanting to differentiate it some way. Maybe they are going to release it for a Mac Pro. Only Apple knows. We'll probably see in a few months. So why did I order the M3 Ultra over the M4 Max uh, Mac Studio? So I have seen all of the synthetic tests you have seen, showing Geekbench, all of that, and showing that the M4 Max is better in some cases, and especially in single core related tasks. But for me, it basically boils down to the amount of extra performance cores I get with the Ultra chip in uh, one package. Because the DAWs I use, which is Ableton and the Logic, they benefit from having performance cores. And on the M3 Ultra, we have 20 of them. If you use Reaper or Cubase, it's even better because Reaper or Cubase can use those eight efficiency cores you have in the M3 Ultra as well. And um, as you probably know, the M3 Ultra is actually just two M3 Max CPUs com combined together, but Mac OS thinks it's only one CPU with a lot of cores. So do I need this performance? Well, uh, the time saved exporting video projects is nice because I do this YouTube thing alongside my work. 
so time management is a thing. Uh, if I can save time, that's good. If it's worth it, I can export a video and go and grab a coffee and you know do something else. But it's something like it's something with get it getting things done right away. You have the exported file, you can upload it to YouTube right away. So it's sort of the workflow, it's just a little bit faster. And in the end it saves uh, a bit more time. And occasionally I create some music production projects with a lot of uh, analog emulated VSTs. I use Diva, I use Repro, I use some other plugins, Kniphonium occasionally. Some of those p plugins tend to be quite heavy on the CPU and I have a few projects that might have been struggling a little bit on the M4 Pro. It wasn't like it wasn't able to play it back in real time and then I had to freeze tracks, but it was near the limit uh, actually. But in some cases I have projects that uh, even with the uh, MacBook Air, it can be enough performance-wise. So it depends a little bit on what type of project I make, but uh, I wanted to move away from a laptop as my main production computer. So I'm going to use the M4 MacBook Air when I am on the go. And I usually just watch YouTube or, I mean, work on text-based stuff when I am on the go anyway. So I don't really need the beefy M4 Pro laptop I have today and it's, going up for sale and honestly you can do stuff with the m4 macbook air as well we are going to see that later on this channel if you use modern software and you focus on apple developed software logic final cut other stuff in most cases it will be able to utilize the performance of a uh, modern you have available in a modern mac ableton for example which is the DAW i usually use is able to use utilize 64 cores for audio processing and 64 threads for audio calculations one track in ableton uses one performance core thread so in theory you could overload your DAW using just one track with a huge change of effects that's actually a good video idea i'm going to explore that in another video if you use outdated software like i mean an old version of pro tools and you run it through for example the rosetta layer you might want to ideally update your software if you can so it can take advantage of new technologies these ch chips brings to the table but i'm not sure if i would go for the m3 ultra if you need to use if you need to use out of date software if you can't update it then you might want to have a better single core speed and maybe look at the M4 Max instead. But again, unless you have huge projects with a lot of tracks, you might want to go for the M3 Ultra way and just brute force your, your way. Or maybe wait until maybe Apple do something with the Mac Pro. So here is a 28 minute uh, 4K video exported from uh, DaVinci, Re DaVinci Resolve on the 16 inch M4 Mac M4 Pro, MacBook Pro. I'm doing some basic color correction and I am using some VST plugins from FabFilter to clean up uh, the audio on the end there. The export on the M4 Pro, MacBook Pro took 23 minutes. And uh, here we are doing the same export on the M3 Ultra base model, 60 GPU cores, 96 gigabytes of memory, and you can uh, see that it takes 15 minutes and 30 seconds. So the M3 Ultra was seven and a half minutes faster on this particular uh, project. You can configure with up to 16 terabytes of internal storage and up to 512 gigabytes of memory or unified memory is actually called. Doing this will of course put a certain uh, requirement on your bank account, but this is for companies or people that actually know what they need, use it for AI, local LLM simulations or a big production studios. It's not like your next door wannabe YouTuber uh, needs this. But the base model M3 Ultra is pretty beefy regardless. One upgrade the M3 Ultra got, uh, which you didn't have on the M3 Max laptops, was Thunderbolt 5. And for me this is interesting because I'm using fast external drives, like the one I'm using with the uh, Psyche enclosure I have talked about on the channel before. Now with Thunderbolt 5 we can get even faster external drives. You can expect speeds to reach 6000 megabytes per second, 
that will be possible with external Thunderbolt 5 drives and it will more or less match the internal drive in the Mac Studio. And using an external drive with a desktop computer is not really a big deal I think. It will save you a lot of money because specking storage on a Mac is quite expensive. You can also look out for the company Polysoft Services. These guys are actually making internal third-party SSDs for a Mac Studio so you can upgrade it. Uh, I'm not sure if they have any one available for the M3 Ultra, but uh, keep an eye on them and uh, see if they have any. I don't game a lot on my Macs, but you will be able to do that on the M3 Ultra. If you need some break between work, I have a dedicated gaming Windows PC rig and for that I have actually moved my PC from my studio now to the uh, living room instead, where I have a big screen TV. But I mean, native games like Baldur's Gate 3, No Man's Sky, Resident Evil, World of Warcraft, X-Plane, and even Path of Exile 2 when it's out of early access will be working natively on a Mac using the uh, Mac Metal uh, frameworks. But not only that, you can even with crossover now nowadays or free tools, you can play a lot of Windows only games on your Mac and it's going to be run through an emulation layer, so the performance may be a little bit spotty. The M3 Ultra will probably brute force its way in most cases anyway, so we'll probably see that a lot of games will actually run pretty good. And let me know if you want me to test some of that on uh, the one I have here. So one video like this is, isn't really enough to get a sense of how a computer performs in different tasks, you have to use it uh, over a time. Synthetic tests can give you a sort of a sense of how it, how it will work, but ultimately you have to at least give me some time before I can test it out in Ableton Live, Logic and other software before we can sort of give a full verdict. But it, it looks promising at least. But for me, the main reason I got this over, for example, the M4 Max was the amount of cores, which I can make use of in music production and of course uh, in the faster uh, video editing. Let me know the one most important thing you would like to see tested on this machine in the comments below or thumbs up a comment if it's already there and I might get to it in the next video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.